Right then, <coughs> so, we're tutorial number three. Uh, this one is going to be all about the software. Uh, we uh, yesterday had this little program which we'll run to the bot just to, uh, oh, it always comes up with board updates, run to the bot just so we can verify that it's, wor it's still working. Five second delay, I'm going to shorten that right down next. And as we've touched the whiskers, the robot things, which a robot that runs into a wall and stops might be amusing in some respects, but it doesn't really achieve a great deal. So, first thing I'm going to do is take that down to two seconds, partly because it'll shorten this um, whole tutorial. Then I'm going to add. An integer my time base only so that uh, uh, I can and set that to 250 equals 250 uh, only so that we now have a nice little box with a 250 which is in milliseconds going to be a quarter of a second and if we want to alter all the time bases slow the robot down change things then we can do it just by altering one variable Right, so then I'm going to go down and collect that, those two there, and delete them there, and go down to the bottom, and get rid of that space there, go past that bottom loop, and then go, so we're now outside the void loop, and create a new void. So what this is, my forward, this is now... I don't know why I keep it in the uh, backspace instead of the return today. So it's automatically put, but as soon as I press return, let's put the second bracket in. So I'm now inside this little uh, extra void created that put those two commands. Now then for good practice, I'm also going to put in the command for the other pins and the reason I'm doing this is as you get deeper in and messing about with switching things, switching things off if you don't make sure that all your pins are set properly then you can end up with a situation that the robot's not making sense and it's because you've got two pins on either side of the motor set high and the um, L298 automatically uh, assumes that the, uh, if you had uh, right forward and right backwards uh, high that that means, go, that means nothing uh, and so well instead of trying to send power to both sides of the motor and shorten your battery out and blowing the 298 out, it ignores it's just a little logic chip that says you can't do that. So, uh, th that void there now uh, will is literally, uh, can be called just by saying my forward. So, we've not really achieved anything, but what we've done is we've created um, an object called my forward. So if I load that down to the uh, robot, it, uh, compile it, and then upload it, it doesn't really make a lot of difference to what it's doing. It's still bump and stop bot, but uh, what we're doing now is we're starting to sow, sow the seeds for making a much more programmable system. So I'm going to also copy that command there and delete it. Come down here and create a void my backwards. So what it's done, and I need to put a space there otherwise it can't see it. We'll drop the two commands in there. And then, as I say, we will also go in 
hand. Make sure that the other two are set. So although we've already, it may, in some respects, some respects, some respects, some respects, it doesn't look like what we're doing is adding a great deal. What we are doing is guaranteeing that all the pins are set the way we expect them. Now then, uh, my backwards, uh, sorry, isn't, isn't right. That's not right, that's not right, that's not right. That is my stop. Because it wouldn't go backwards, because they'd all switched off. I now copy that and say I actually want to command my backwards then what I need then is I need those two high like I say well, one of the things you get over time is you can look at the commands and you can visualize the pins so we've got three um, objects there so if I now go back in there and put in that a stop or stop then we're actually in a situation where we've achieved nothing but we have achieved um, uh, uh, the object and I'll show you where this really starts making uh, making sense so if we now go we'll load that in and we'll go back to the bot <coughs> It is sometimes worth going back just to prove that what you've done does work. Occasionally you think you, what you've done makes sense and it's absolute nonsense. So the robot is still stop bump and stop robot. So where we're going to take this from here now is I'm going to pick up my forwards, copy that whole thing and add the command in or add the void my left back so what it will do here is right forward is going to be low so is left forward and left backwards is going to be high right, so we'll not do a lot more just yet we'll actually see what we're going to do with that so we now know that that robot stops thing is, it's just, all it's doing is, I'm doing it again. Uh, all it does is stop. So what I'm going to do is, inside here now, I'm going to add, or I'm going to cheat initially, by copying that first part of the if statement. I'll stick that in there. Add the bracket. Add the bracket and... And then add two curly brackets. So... What we've got now is we have an if statement inside an if statement. Uh, we call this nesting. Uh, so what you've got there is if that, then it stops. But now we're saying if, we're also saying, but in that stop condition, if the left is, is the one that was switched, then what we're going to do is we're going to go my backwards. And then we're going to delay and leave that command switched on for my time base. Then we're going to go my left back. And again, we're going to delay for my time base. So, in a way that is very easy to read, we can now see that what we're doing is we're saying my uh, backwards, my left, so that initially, when that's, if that switch is pulled, it's going to pull, you're going to back away, it's then going to uh, pull, pull backwards left, and then uh, it, it would, it, we'll see what happens there. It's actually going to go wrong. I'm going to give you that. So it's going to go wrong, but you'll be interested to see why it, it does go wrong. So we'll now go back over to the vehicle. The ribbit, table bot, whatever you want to call it. I'll 
loading. Two second delay. So we're going forwards and for a split second it goes to reverse and then stops. So we're now in a situation where the logics are locking each other out. Right, so what I'm going to do now is go back in and say if any of those, so what we've said is if any of those switches are uh, pressed, then stop. But then we're saying if it's the left switch, then go backwards to start with for a quarter of a second, then go, go left. So what we're trying to do is turn away from that switch. But we, we, as you've seen, it then means that we need to switch the motors back on. So if I say my forward down there, program that. Now it's difficult to see that the actual left motor is doing a bit more turning. But we've now got a robot that reverses away. But it's only doing it on the one switch. Right, so what we're going to have to do is go back into the software and we're going to, because uh, we've got a situation now where uh, we've got a, a solution for it, for if it hits the left button, but we haven't got one if it hits the right button. So again, inside that loop, we're going to now copy that whole statement. So if it's the right button, this time, call up right back. Now we know we haven't got a right back, so we're going to copy that there. And recall that right back and ah, and then we spot that I actually the reason it, the reason it didn't look like there was a lot happening was because we hadn't actually set it. Ah, there you see. So what I'm going to do now is go back into that and set that high. And then down here, set that high. Which, that's the problem with quarter of a second. You know, uh, initially we would have wondered why the robot wasn't turning. Ha 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 ha. But you've got to spot these things as you go. Right, so we'll program that. Go over to the robot. Now we've got a situation where, yes, it, you can tell it goes a bit, a bit further, yeah, and, yeah, so we've now got a situation where of those two are touched, so the last thing we need to do now is fairly quickly, go in and, oops, copper, right switch. And turn that into middle switch. So that we've now got a third switch. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go backwards. But I'm actually going to have it go backwards twice the time base. So if you go star two, if the X doesn't, X being a letter, when they're doing um, multiplication uh, in uh, uh, robots or in this language, you use a star to say times. Uh, now then I might leave the right in because um, what I don't want it to do is just keep bumping up against the square wall. I actually do want it to turn. But I'm going to get it come back a bit further before it turns. So we'll load that in. Go over to the bottom. So we've now got an if statement that works on all three of the uh, switches. So I'm not really going to 
do a lot more with this tutorial because you've got enough there to create a basic robot that uh, will avoid the walls or it won't avoid them, it'll actually react to the walls. Uh, I'm going to go over to the arena now and let's actually see this little robot in action and see what how he actually performs. If I could turn the switch on. Still a bit bumper, still a bit vicious, and uh, I get the feeling that one motor is running slightly faster than the other. Um, I think we might have to look at slowing him down in the next uh, uh, thing, which will be useful because we'll look at pulse width modulation. <laughs> 